This video is about designing a new vent for an A-frame. Well hello folks and welcome to my trailer. I've been really really pleased that a lot of people have been tuning into my videos. Really excited about that. I've got more subscribers and more viewers so thank you. I hope I can continue to make interesting videos for you. In this particular one, I'm not going to be talking about traveling, and I'm not going to be talking about nature. This is a design video. Now I know design is not really exciting for some people, but I got a reason I want to get into design. In my particular trailer, which this is a 2004 A-liner, I've had a problem with it since I first bought it, and I've tried different things, but in reality, it had to be fixed permanently. And this video deals with one of the thorns in my side, something I've really had to vent about a lot, and that is my vents. Now to be fair, these are not the same vents that I had when I first bought my A-liner. Here is a photo of the originals. It's a typical vent design with the raising and lowering of the vent cover being controlled by a knob at the top. The mechanism consists of a lower support that is attached to the frame and an upper arm that raises and lowers the cover. There are however design issues with this type of control. One is that the lifting arm only secures the middle of the vent and not the front corners. Second, the material the vent cover is made of was hard plastic which becomes brittle at lower temperatures. The third issue is that the vents open up facing forward with the hinge at the back. This leaves the vent cover susceptible to high winds, like the ones you'd expect going down a road or a highway. This is of course exactly what happened to me a few years ago on a trip south. My vents literally disintegrated in a Montana crosswind. I had to cover the holes with garbage bags and duct tape until I could buy new ones. Unfortunately, the new vents were not much better. Although the lids were made of a softer, more bendable plastic, they were still controlled by the center arm to bring them up and down. I had no choice but to bungee them in place during transport. But then a new problem arose. With the vent up while stopped at camp, a crosswind broke the connector between the arm and the lid. I was getting pretty frustrated by all these design issues. I'm hoping I can make something out of this to make it work for now, but I'll be looking for a better design in the future. So that summarizes some of my past concerns. Now let's go back to the present. Well, even if you're one of those fortunate people that have not had their vent cover crack, break, or just be destroyed, there's still another issue that affects a lot of people, and that's where they put the handles to control the vents. Now I'm five feet nine inches, and when I'm on the floor and I reach up, I cannot touch that control. I have to get on my tippy toes and really stretch to make it work. That is not convenient. And for a lot of people who are shorter or they have stretching issues, they can't operate it at all. So what kind of design is that? Okay, I get 87 inches, which is 7 feet 3 inches. Now that's pretty far. That's not convenient at all. But this is the easy vent, because I can get under it. The other vent is above my kitchen counter. And in order to get it, I have to be on an angle and stretch over a counter, which is closer to 92 inches which makes that other vent even harder to try to access. Well, those that are familiar with my older videos know that I do a lot of videos on little ideas that will improve your camping experience. And I usually propose solutions that anybody can do. It doesn't take a lot of time and it doesn't take a lot of money. And I think a lot of people appreciate those. In this particular case, it's a little bit different because what I'm proposing is a little bit more complex and I really don't expect the average person to be able to do it. So who am I addressing in this video? The manufacturers. To me, it's the manufacturer's responsibility to come up with a product that suits its purpose. And I honestly don't think 
when it comes to vents and trailers like this, that a lot of effort has been put in to improve them. And that's why I have come up with this solution. Now that you understand some of the problems I've had with these vents, let me now show you what my solution is to all of these problems. So here's my new design on an existing Campco vent. So the first thing I did was I removed that big bar that was there, so it's no longer in the way, and installed a new mechanism. Now, as far as the mechanism goes, there's a bracket here, there's a bracket here, and there's a metal bar attached to the vent cover. I've got brackets here, and it's hinged to this control arm here. Here's another shot of the mechanism from a different perspective. Now, if you can see in the control arm, there's little notches up and down it. Those control the height. So, how does this work? There's a little latch here. It's a safety latch with a spring on it. And to use it, just unload that, and up you go. It's all ready to go. If you want to go halfway, you can only go halfway go there and lock it up. It goes like that. Latch latches in place. Reason you need that latch is because it keeps those corners from coming out during the wind. They're very secure. It's not here. It's in the corners, and that's important. A secure vent lid with an automatic lock eliminates one big headache. Well, as you've probably noticed, that's not a complete system. That's just a means of opening and closing the vent cover. So, I wanted an actual system. Here's what I've come up with. I have this unit here, which includes my Bitfinex computer fan that runs on 12 volts in a frame. And what I'm calling this is a modular fan. And what I mean by modular is you can put it up in your vent whenever you want it. You can keep it there or you can take it down in seconds. And I have a lot of reasons why I don't want the fan in there all the time, but let me at least show you how it works. I've got the fan mounted on plexiglass. This is plexiglass as well, it's just covered with foil. And I made an aluminum frame around it. I have two clips right here and right here. That's just spring steel that actually hold it in place, plus the plug-in for the fan. Let me show you how this works. To insert the fan module, I first place the lower part behind the brackets and into the narrow groove. I then push the spring clips in so they don't catch the vent frame sides. I also make sure the clips are engaged and the fan is securely in place. The fan does not interfere with the vent lid mechanism, nor with the lock. After connecting the fan plug, I have a switch by my bed that turns the fan on. To remove, unplug the fan, unspring the clips, and the fan module comes out. So there you go folks. This is my prototype of a modular system for vents on an A-frame trailer. I know it's a very, very small category and not a lot of people will use it. Probably 99% of my viewers have no idea what I'm talking about or why I need it. Now there's a lot of things I still have to do with it. For example, there's nothing to stop bugs from coming in. So I'm going to have to put a screen around the fan and also bug proof any areas that are exposed to the outside. That'll come. But I think for now it's working well. Um, it's probably not something everybody can use. And as far as being able to buy one of these yourselves, well, I don't own a patent on this, nor will I own a patent on this. If you get a patent, you've got to fight for it, you've got to spend a lot of money, and I just can't do with that. So if somebody else wants to add to this idea, go ahead. I can't stop them. Hopefully I'll get a little credit or a case of beer out of it or something like that. I don't know. But uh, it was fun making. I enjoy making stuff like this. It's kind of what I like to do. But I also like to travel. Now that it's getting a little bit dark, I can show you with a little bit better contrast, I know the lighting's been terrible, as to what I've accomplished. In the original design that came with the A-liner, there is a control knob for the vent that was way too high for most people to be able to reach it. 
What I've done is I've changed the mechanism. Does that mechanism work any better? Well, I think I'm of average height and I have no problem touching this lever because it's just at the side, it's at the corner closest to me. So all I have to do is bring that over and bring the arm down. And the good thing about the arm is it's even closer to me. So I have no problem putting it in place and I can do it that fast. If I need the vent down, there we go. Locked in place, only takes a few seconds. Now there's an additional bonus to this. Yes, there's more. And that is, if you put it down, say about there, you can use the handle as a drying rack. Put up your clothes, maybe a t-shirt. You got stinky socks that need to be aired out. There you go. So it's win-win. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. You like my ideas. Um, if there is enough interest, I can show you how to make it, but it's not easy. You can see I put a lot of time in this and effort, and I think it's going to work for me. I really, really hope that there's somebody out there, especially a manufacturer, that might like to try this idea. I'm more than welcome to share. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you check out my other videos that are not all about design, and happy travels. So that's my idea. Thanks for having patience and stay tuned because not every video in the future is going to be about design. It'll be about traveling and whatever people want to see. I hope you enjoyed this and please subscribe. And I always appreciate a thumbs up.